It's Math 98. We're going to keep digging into these square roots, and we're going to talk about simplifying them. Um, and basically what we're talking about when we're talking about simplifying square roots is doing as much of the square rooting as we can. So, for example, if I write the square root of 25, that is not simplified because I can square root that to 5. Um, I don't want this to be misleading, but if I write the square root of 31, that actually is simplified. But if I write the square root of 32, that is not simplified all the way. And here's how I can tell. There's a square in there still. So what I'm going to think about is breaking this up with multiplication. And it is related to this. If I have the square root of a times b, that's I can break this up into saying that's the same as the square root of a times the square root of b. And sometimes I put little notches at the back of them just to show where the square root's closed off, just for clarity. Um, just a habit that I have. So if I think about the square root of 32, well, I'm going to break it up with multiplication where one of the things in there is a perfect square. And what I notice is the square root of 32 is 16 times 2. Right? I could say this is 16 times 2. So this is the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. Just a little side note here. Uh, both A and B cannot be negative for this to work. So at least one of these have to be positive in order for this relationship to hold. Um, and that's something that will come up later. So square root of 13, that's the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. Well, okay, the square root of 16 is 4, right? I can do that square rooting, but square root of 2, I'm not going to get any further than that. So I'm going to leave this as 4 times the square root of 2. And now this is simplified. I've done as much of the square rooting as I can. And it's easy to check these if you're right or not. You can, you can grab your calculator and go, let's see, what's the square root of 32? Well, it's 5.65, blah, blah, blah. What's the square root of 4 times the square root of 2? I'm sorry, not square root of 4. What is 4 times the square root of 2? It's also the same number. See how they're the same? Now, theoretically, there could be, like, this goes on forever. Not theoretically. It actually goes on forever. But theoretically, maybe it's different somewhere down the line. I'm just going to tell you it's not. Um, you might have to just trust me on that. All right, so as, as long as one is, at least uh, one of these is positive, we are good to go. So let's, let's do a little more simplifying. Let's break up a couple more of these. So this is the type of thinking where it's really good to be familiar with those, those squares. And these squares, these perfect squares, these are the numbers that I'm looking for to pull out of these as I'm simplifying these. The directions for this would be simplify. So let's do that. 75. Well, 25 goes into it. Great. So I'm going to think of this 75 as, uh, and then from here, square root of 25 is 5. So this is 5 root 3. And notice we've done as much of the square rooting as we can. Square root of 45. Mm, there's a 9 in there. And I'm going to say, you know, if you don't see it, if you don't see the square root right away, just start going down the list. Does 4 go into there? Does 9 go into there? Does 16? Like, and use your calculator. There's nothing wrong with that. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 root 5. Um, 700. Well, 100. 100's in there. How about 100 times 7? Square root of 100 is 10. 10 root 7. I want to um, also point out that, like, you can do this in, in pieces. In other words, let's say I had 100, uh, a square root of 180 that I wanted to deal with. Now, you might see right away, uh, I don't, that 36 goes into it. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's, that's great. Like, let's see, 180 divided by 36. So the quick jump is like, oh, this is 36 times 5. Square root 36 is 6, so it's 6 root 5. But if you don't see the big piece right away, maybe you're like, well, I know that 9 goes into this because 9 goes into 18. So this is 9 square root of 9 times probably 20. Yep. And then, uh, so that would be 3 root 20. But just take, a look at, just take a look at the piece that's still in there, 20. Well, the 4 goes into that, right? So you could break this up into root 4 times root 5. Root 4 is 2. And then I have 3 times 2 times root 5. 3 times 2 is 6. Notice that gets me right to that 6 root 5. So you can break it up by pieces.
Let's look at some things like this, square root of x cubed. Well, I know that if this is an even number, I can just cut it in half. So how about I write this as x squared times x. Square root of x squared is x, so this would be x root x. With the, with the y to the ninth, why don't you write it as y to the 8 times y. So notice that would be y to the 4th, square root of that, and then that y right there. All right, let's do two more of this. Uh, square root of 36 times b, that's, that's a b, sorry, to the 7th. Well, square root of 36 is 6, so let me think about that. 6 square root of b to the 7th. And b to the 7th, I can split up just like I was splitting up the other ones. So this would be 6 square root of b to the 6th times square root of b. Remember, I can have that exponent. So this would be 6 times b cubed times square root of b. And that is simplified completely. Looking at the 63... Um, u to the third, v to the fifth. I'm going to break this up into a bunch of pieces. So 63 is 9 times 7. And I pick the 9 because it's perfect square. The u cubed, I'm going to take a u out. So I've got a u squared and a u. The v to the fifth, I'm going to take a v out. So I've got v to the fourth and v. Whew. Okay, so square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 7. I'm going to let that sit. Square root of u squared is u. Square root of u. I'm going to let that sit. Square root of v to the fourth is v squared. And then I've got the square root of v. So notice I've got this left over. Square root of 7. Square root of u. Square root of v. And now what I can do is I can put those all together. So I have 3 times uv squared square root of 7 uv. So let's go ahead and do these. So I have this addition going on here, 4 plus the square root of 25. And what I want to do first is simplify this. So I know the square root of 25 is 5. So this would be the same as 4, uh, oops, sorry, 4 plus 5. So that is 9. How about 2 plus the square root of 98? Well, square root of 98, 98 isn't just a perfect square. I wonder what goes into 98. Um, well, I know 4 does. Nope, 4 doesn't. Um, I think that... Let's try... Let's just try 2 and see what happens. 49. Okay, 2 times 49. Great. So you see what I had to do is I just had to start breaking it up and see that I could find squares. So that means that this is the same as uh, 49 times 2... And I'm going to square both those. And the square root of 49 is 7. So this is 2 plus 7 square root of 2. And I can't put those together because this is less like 2, but this is square root of 2. So they're counting different things. Think about like terms. All right, same idea with this. I'm going to do this division. Let me think about square root of 48. 48 is divisible by 4. It might be divisible by 16 as well. It sure is. I can tell because there's a 4 in there. Like 48 divided by 16. 16 times 3. So this is 16 times 3. Square roots of those. So that I could write this as 4 minus, square root of 16 is 4, root 3. And those are both divisible, uh, being divided by 2. Now this division, it's 4 divided by 2 minus 4 root 3 divided by 2. Like these are both being divided by that 2. This is equivalent to this. And when I do this division, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then here, this is 4 times root 3. So I really only need to do this division here. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So minus 2 root 3. Let's do a couple more kind of like this with the division. All right, three different ones to look at. So 6 minus square root of 45 divided by 3. So let me think about this one. Uh, it's 6 over 3 minus square root of 45 over 3. Notice in the last problem I simplified the square root first. I'm doing this in this order instead just because, just to show you can do them in either order. So 6 divided by 3, that's 2. And 45, let me break this up. I'm going to simplify this. This is 9 times 5. So square root of 9 times square root of 5 is the square root of 45. 
So this is the same as 3 root 5. I'm just going to rewrite it here. 3 root 5. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this is the same as 2 minus square root of 5. And if you ever do this and you're not sure, like if your answer is right, grab your calculator and just see if the decimals are the same. So like if I go, notice it's in parentheses because it's the numerator, 6 minus square root of 45. Whoops, I'm at the square root of 45. And then I close off the parentheses for the numerator divided by 3. That gives me this. And I said that's equivalent to 2 minus square root of 5. good evidence that they are, uh, in fact, the same. All right, uh, square root of 9 over 64. Well, this is the same as the square root of 9 divided by the square root of 64, which is 3 eighths. Square root of 45 over 80. Now, there's you can do this a couple ways. You can reduce this fraction first and then square root the answer, or you can square root like the pieces and then go from there. I think I'll just do it both ways just to show. So one way you could do this is you could say square root of 45. We did that up above. It's 3 root 5 over uh, square root of 80. Hmm. Well, 4 goes into 80. I think 16 might as well. Yep. 16 and 5. So this is square root of 16 times square root of 5. So this is 4 root 5. Notice root 5 divided by root 5 is 1, so this is 3 fourths. So you could do it that way, or what you could do is you could reduce the fraction first. just want to show that both ways work. Um, these are both divisible by 5, both uh, 45 and 80. So I could say that this is divide by 5, divide by 5. Right, I'm dividing by 5 over 5 in there. Uh, 9 sixteenths, which you can see is... When you square root that, you get 3 fourths. All right, let's deal with these three, and then we'll be done. So m to the 8th divided by m squared. Well, I know that that is m to the 6th. And I know when I square root, I can take half of that exponent, so this is m cubed. All right, let's take a look at this, this next one here then. Um, square root of 27 m cubed over square root of 196. I don't think I'm going to be able to reduce anything out of those. So I'm going to think about it pieces at a time. Well, this m cubed, I know how to split that up. I'm going to treat that as m times the square root of m squared. And then 27 is 9 times 3. So that should be square root of m. So square root of 9 times square root of 3. So if I think about those pieces, square root of 9 is 3. Square root of m squared is m. And then what's left in the square root is a 3m. Now let me think about breaking up this 196. Um, 196. Just divide it by 4 and see what happens. 4 times 49. Oh, 196 is a perfect square. You should just probably check that at first. It's 14. Okay. So that is over 14. And we're done. All right. Next one. We've got... All of this, man. So I think in this case, I see some things I can reduce first. I'm going to reduce this first, this fraction in here. Like 50 and 72, those are both divisible by 2. So I could reduce that part to 25 over 36. Oh, that looks good. Uh, x to the 5th over x to the 4th is just leaves me 1x in the numerator. Uh, y cubed over y leaves me y squared. I'm sorry, in, yeah, in the numerator, in the numerator. All right, so let's do this. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of y squared is y. Square root of x is square root of x. I'm not going to get any further with that. Over square root of 36 is 6. Hey, give these questions a try, uh, the practice questions. Post any questions you have in the forum or message me.